I will tell you this, during my 1.9 months as the commander of the brigade, this is the toughest battle. I can tell you, especially the toughest battle, was when I came here three weeks ago. This is northern friendship and also southern. This is the outskirts of the forest. It is determined by the fact that there are all kinds of combat that the brigade is currently engaged in. This is a deciduous forest with its own peculiarities of conducting combat, including plantations, private houses, single-story, two-story, and multi-story buildings. And this, I say, represents different types of combat. The Turkish area is almost gone. Everything has burned down, everything has been bombed, and it continues every day KBs. Mortars, the complexity of the battles in the area is very challenging. There are still many green spaces that have not been mowed. There is grass, there are trees, the houses are difficult, many shed cellars. You can't know where he looks, it's very complicated. That's the difficulty. Their tactics are one. They'll push through their radios. We will capture their radios. They say that either you leave or you come in and we will take you down ourselves. So they have no choice. They push forward. We take them down. They push. We take them down. They push. Slowly, they move through the greenery somewhere in the house in the shed, they gather like that. Two men came, then another two. Accumulation, accumulation. They come, they come. About 10 of them gather there. And then they come at you, at your position, asking to storm us. There were Kadyrovites. There were Kadyrovites. Because there were mainly prisoners. That is, we heard about the prisoners. Mainly it was them, and we heard their speech. But the enemy concentrated, the PNC veterans sent greetings. Not 200, the special operation resulted in less than 100. Well, it was tough for a week and a half, but I must say the battalions handled it excellently. It was hard. They had the toughest time. Five to seven assault groups per day with a minimum of 10 men in each assault. But I will say the level of the soldier, their endurance is very commendable. I deeply respect, honestly, the soldier. In my command chain, the platoon commander, the company commander, the sergeant, the battalion commander, they have done everything possible. Let's say we have eight men and they might have 20. And these eight men, damn, like grass when we hit them. I remember it like it was yesterday. The call sign was not We take their radio and listen in. For a day, they didn't mention him. Only after a day, he smelled so bad. It was terrifying. It turns out, we got so close it was crazy. We were sitting in the house on duty. We couldn't see a thing in the bushes. The situation is such that he approaches, 15 to 15 meters away, stands behind a tree and is already aiming. They hit him, approached with the group, took him, and now we are listening. There are those who say that we won't go, while the elders shout to go. And that's it. That's the scariest part. At night. They are advancing in large forces, storming, in groups, and deploying a lot of equipment in this area. They are pushing hard, but even in the face of this onslaught, the Ukrainian guys are holding their ground at this section of the front. Burn, Therese. They use fabs, kibis, mainly 250 kilograms to erase everything on the ground. The second Bachmet, as they say, is after Yitka. This is their practice to erase everything. Then in quotes, well, we liberated them and so on.
They are trying to enter through the entrances. And then, they are figuring out where we are and attempting to breach the walls to get through. They are breaking down the walls and trying to get to a scheme it. Come on, well, go on. The last time I heard, they were just hammering away at something. We used TNT blocks. Once we set it up, detonated it, the wall collapsed, and that was it. There was a passage. We are making passages through the walls so that after they start jumping into the free drops, we can create a passage that allows you to, for example, enter the first entrance on the second floor and be able to move to the last one. We had a situation where they wanted to get to us. We were sitting in the second entrance and they wanted to come in through the first one because it was destroyed and we had no way to establish a defense there. They wanted to enter through the first entrance, so they approached the entrance, peed in the building, and waited there. And they sat, probably waiting. And while they were sitting, we were past this. I went out on the balcony with a one-time use item, pretending to be in the building. They tried to drive in with two BTRs, armored personnel carriers. One BTR entered, realized that there were no possibilities, and then backed out. And the second BTR, armored personnel carrier, has arrived with the troops. It drove right up to the entrance, as our building is five stories tall and adjacent to another. And they drove under the neighboring building. While they were driving, we set it on fire with a disposable lighter in Bachman. And by that time, the guys had already burned it under the entrance. And the airborne troops were securing the city. The airborne troops didn't even have time to hurry. We just repainted them, and even if we lost our position there, the soldier would immediately move about 60 to 70 meters, dig in, and go again. Basically, I went through there, and I didn't even hold. More than 200 to 300 meters, not more, in three weeks. That's it. It is all thanks to the same sergeant, the senior one who was leading them. Who was with them? The platoon commander, whose management actions are heard on the radio, and who is trusted by them supported by the battalion commander, who, I must say, has done a lot. This link from soldier to battalion commander has made us what we are now, what we have. The difficulty is that there are buildings. Moving through the buildings carries a high risk of sniper fire. Everyone knows very well that everything is mined. Artillery shelling, tank shelling. When the little tank moves out from the cover, it operates just like the BTR armored personnel carrier does. And it's not always possible to reach it. Artillery can't always reach it. And it's not always possible to hit it with anti-personnel. Mean. First, it's definitely preparation. It solves a lot of things because the soldier feels a newfound confidence. We used to write about it in our notes. It is as it is when he understands how to move and act in buildings. He will apply that on the battlefield. He knows how to fight in the air and how to properly use a grenade and a manka. This is very important. He understands when he will have the advantage in which types of combat and at what moments. We also learn, and the most important aspect is the psychological mindset. If he is not in the mood for this, he may end up as a teenager and he simply won't be able to withstand the pressures on the battlefield. And the third is the lack of understanding of the general reason why we are here, what we stand for, and what will happen if we lose. They are fighting for their family, for their future, for my child, for my mom, dad, relatives, brother, in-laws, for my people, who, even later, when a person grows up, Believe me, when this war ends on our terms, she will not be ashamed. And I will tell you about my fighter, he truly will not be ashamed. No fighter, no commander will be ashamed that they retreated somewhere, that they ran away somewhere. And so, with their steadfast actions, they simply grind down the close combat, just grinding down the enemies. I can tell you, in packs there. Our people truly demonstrate our Ukrainian character and resilience. We have very brave people. We are very brave. Indeed, no options. We are on our own land and we will continue to be. Experience in working. Experience, it is little experience. War does not stand still, it moves forward. 
and we must move forward with the war in the same way. We have people, we focus on people. If there are no people, we engage in self-preparation. We always storm in defense on the line because we must know it perfectly so that we can be able to pass it on to the people. If you don't know this, then you won't be able to teach it either. That's all. It is important not to be afraid. If the assault has begun, it is crucial not to get stuck in a stupor to find that in it. Marine spirit and to start pushing forward. When the fighters start to push, then, in principle, all assaults end well. And when the fighters become disoriented, there is no balance, no communication among the fighters, then it is clear that. These are my toughest battles. We hadn't faced anything like this even before 2022. But the brigade is quite resilient. I am very impressed, honestly. It has been quite a grind up to this point, and the opponent has caught up with it. They didn't think there was any planning involved. They thought it was 100% domination, but there is. What they were planning, they are closest to asking Dan. Further on, I think that 100% of their plans are thwarted. 18 years have passed, and before I even had a chance to receive my draft notice, I was already here. I had already been in training for three months when my mom called and said, Nazar, your draft notice has arrived. I told her, Mom, take it back. But I like this. This is my path. At this moment, I can't see myself in civilian life. I don't want them to reach us. I have a daughter, and I don't want her to experience what happened in Buchar. I don't want it to be like in Torrid's. Here, damn it, the war is about either you or them. That's it. This is a very wild war. I don't understand what they are fighting for. I am fighting for my land, for my loved ones, for my family, for my building. I want to go home. I want peace like before, for everything to be good. I feel that this is my land. Even when we are fighting in that area, I feel that this is my land. I feel that I am reclaiming what is mine. I am not taking it, but simply saving what is mine. There was a case where one of our guys from our brigade had such an act, he was wounded. He had injuries to both legs, and he managed to get up. He was climbing up the floors, throwing grenades directly, and passed on a message saying to sell it to his wife so she could raise our son. He says, and the guy says, don't give up. After all, he says, we are of Cossack descent. He says, boys to the end. 